All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are. We're starting on the loanable funds market. Uh, and you'll notice the loanable funds market looks like just any other market. When we were talking about micro, the market for strawberries or machetes or cigars or whatever, uh, it looks just like a regular market with supply and demand. One of the key components here is you got to notice your supply curve is now going to be your savers, people who are putting their money into banks and uh, provide, and the banks provide loans to your other people in this market who are your demanders. Why I wrote demanders for D, I have no idea. This should be borrowers here. I apologize. So we got savers and borrowers here. And if these guys change their behaviors, if these curves shift, we change uh, the interest rate. So you notice I have RIR here. It's real interest rate. Um, you're going to get a graph next week that's going to show you nominal interest rates, and you might think, oh, i got to remember this. Well, yeah, but on the test, whenever they give you a free response question, they tell you in the question, how does the real interest rate change? How does the nominal interest rate change? So I'm going to give you a scenario here that's kind of common. Um, we talked about some in class, but let's talk about when the government runs a deficit. So the government runs a deficit means they spend more money than they bring in. Uh, and it can have two ways of being shown here. I'm going to show you both of them in just a second. So we got a government deficit. So that's going to mean that the government is spending too much money. So what if you don't if you're spending too much money, how are you going to be able to pay your bills here? Well, there's two ways to look at this. If the resources in this vulnerable funds market, are the resources that are for private investment that you would use, uh, as a, that businesses might use to buy new capital goods, machinery, tools, well, then the, uh, the government is going to have to borrow more money if you look at it like this. So they're going to take uh, dollars that could have been used for private investment uh, to pay off their bills. So then it's going to look like this. And the key thing here is, so the government has spent money, and now they have driven up your real interest rate. This should sound very familiar to you. So we talked in class, the government spends money, the multiplier effect happens, spend, 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 and then wait, hold on, the interest rate starts to climb, and the AD curve starts moving back to the left, to the higher interest rates. This is actually crowding out, uh, and what it looks like in the loanable funds market. But another way to look at this, and this kind of messes up with students, and I'll tell you how you deal with this uh, come AP test time in just a second. Another way to look at it is that these are resources, these are dollars uh, from somebody's savings. And if you look at it this way, you say, hmm, well, if the government doesn't have any money, then they are reducing the amount of savings, dollars from savings, uh, because of their behavior and not having enough dollars of their own. Uh, so we're going to move our supply curve back to the left here. And you say, oh, you get the higher interest rate again. And so both of these graphs, depending on the book that people use, uh, in our book, the uh, Krugman book, they use this way, but uh, some of you who have MANQ see it this way. Uh, either way, you get a higher real interest rate, and it's a way to illustrate crowding out, okay? So, and if you see the next video, I'll tell you what happens in the opposite situation, all right? If you have a question, let me know.